Hey everyone, Rich Gassaway here. I want to take a moment before I begin the podcast to remind you about the new Situational Awareness Matters Online Academy. This online academy will teach your members everything they need to know about situational awareness and high-risk decision-making for a crazy affordable price. If you enroll 31 or more of your members, the cost of the academy is just $49 per person. That's like half the cost of a decent pair of gloves. Since the Academy opened for enrollment in January, more than 700 students have taken the class, and for good reason. Did you know that issues related to situational awareness are consistently identified as contributing factors in near-miss injury and fatality events? Please, don't wait for a critical injury or fatality event to happen in your organization. I get to work with many departments who've experienced critical injuries or fatalities, and they're some of the most hurting organizations you can imagine. Please don't wait for that to happen to you. Seriously, I can take your understanding of situational awareness and high-risk decision-making to the level that it needs to be. Visit samatters.com, click on the green button on the right side of the homepage labeled Online Academy. Now, for our premium enrolled students in the academy, they get to participate in a monthly webinar where I have guests talk about important safety topics. Last month, the guest was Dennis Rubin talking about crew resource management. In August, our webinar guest will be Fire Chief Ron Canterman talking about safety leadership advocacy and being a champion. On September 11th, our webinar guests will be retired fire chief, attorney, and physician's assistant, John Murphy, talking about first responder safety and street drugs like fentanyl and heroin. This is a really important topic because this is becoming a big issue for first response agencies. On October 30th, our webinar guest will be FDNY Battalion Chief Dan Sheridan, talking about first do Battalion Chief size up and situational awareness. Again, the webinars are exclusively for the premium enrolled students in the academy, and the playbacks are available um, in the course room for those who might miss the live event. Okay, that's enough of the pre-show stuff. Roll that podcast intro. Today's episode is sponsored by Midwest Fire. For more than 20 years, Midwest Fire has been manufacturing high-quality tankers, tanker pumpers, and fire rescue vehicles in the United States and Canada. Keeping firefighters safe while enhancing their capabilities is what they do best. To learn more, go to MidwestFire.com. This is Firefighter Lionel Crowder from the Winnipeg Fire Department, and you're listening to Dr. Richard Gasway on SA Matters Radio. The SA Matters mission is simple. They want to help us see the bad things coming in time to avoid bad outcomes. Hello, everyone, and welcome to episode 174 of the Situation Awareness Matters radio show. I'm your host, Rich Gassaway. The purpose of this show is to improve situation awareness and decision-making for individuals and teams who work in high-risk, high-consequence, time-compressed environments with changing conditions. The SA Matters mission is simple, to help you see the bad things coming and time to avoid bad outcomes. If you're new to the podcast, you have some homework to do by going back and listening to the past episodes. I've released a new episode every Tuesday, never missed a week, for over three years. And I do that because of you, the listeners of this show. You truly inspire me. I've been sharing the message of situational awareness and high-risk decision-making in live program events for 12 years now and have trained over 59,000 first responders. I'm here for the long run, and for so long as I'm able, I will continue to share this message, a message of hope, a message of inspiration, a message of encouragement for all first responders who want to make sure they're able to develop and maintain strong situational awareness and make quality, high-risk decisions. I'm dedicated to helping improve your safety and your survival and to help you accomplish the most important goal of all. Go home to the ones who love you. And speaking of the message, I'm coming to you today from Evansville, Indiana, where I'm in town to deliver two programs co-sponsored by the Evansville Fire Department and the Indiana Fire Chiefs Association. I have to pause and thank Fire Chief Mike Conley for having the vision 
to design an amazing two-day training program that costs his department, wait for it, wait for it, zero dollars. That's right, it costs his department nothing. This is because Mike went out and asked for sponsors. He told me it wasn't hard to do to find companies to step up and offer financial assistance for this training. Sponsors for the program include Vectern Gas and Electric Company, Deaconess Hospital, University of Southern Indiana, the Evansville Firefighters Credit Union, Old National Bank, Global Emergency Products, Hoosier Fire Equipment, Mission Barbecue, Public Safety Medical, and Seagulls Uniforms. In all, they were able to contribute $15,000 to fund the program, books for attendees, the venue, food, and prizes. I tell, I tell departments with limited budgets that this is the way to go, and it is. And if you want to host the program and you have limited resources, contact me and I'll help you do what Evansville did. Host a program that costs your department nothing. Okay, in today's feature segment, I'm going to explore how complex communications can impact situational awareness. And when I'm done with the feature segment, stick around and I'll tell you where you can attend an upcoming Situational Awareness Matters Tour Stop event. Who knows, maybe I'll be right in your state or right in your county soon. We have many traits that make us uniquely human. Among them is our ability to engage in complex communications. We can look at black ink squiggled on a piece of bleached paper and derive meaning from those symbols. We call that skill set reading comprehension. And when we listen to and comprehend the meaning of more than 10,000 words being spoken, we call that listening comprehension. Indeed, our ability to communicate is quite complex. But our complex communication system has a downside also, and that's complex miscommunications. The Communications Challenge Communicating effectively is difficult enough when we're operating in our relatively low stress day in and day out lives. You probably experience examples of miscommunication all the time in conversations with people. This can get compounded by talking on the phone instead of in person because we miss the nonverbal communications of body language. It can get even more complicated when we communicate in writing, like in emails and text messaging, because we lose the communication meaning of the voice inflection. When you add stress into the equation, communications can become even more challenging because stress can limit your ability to hear. Literally, it's called auditory exclusion. Stress can also impact your ability to comprehend the meaning of complex communications. The English language is complex, full of symbolism, synonyms, antonyms, homonyms, acronyms, abbreviations, similes, and metaphors. No wonder we can't keep it all straight. Sender and Receiver The message sent always seems clear to the sender, but it may not seem so clear to the receiver. It can be complicated by stress, as the sender may find him or herself thinking they're saying something in a certain way when actually the words came out differently. What the receiver understands as the message may not actually match the words that were heard. Can you see how communications can quickly contribute to issues of situational awareness when two or more people are dependent on communicating and being commonly understood? I'm reminded of the classical comical skit of Abbott and Costello entitled Who's On First? If you're not familiar with it, head over to YouTube and search it out. It's worth the view. Common Terminology and practice in context. One way to improve communications is to use common terminology. Everyone uses the same words or phrases 
in a commonly understood context. This takes some work and some practice. Standard operating guidelines are a good way to get responders dialed in on those common terms and their meanings. However, it's simply not good enough just to write it down. It has to be practiced. And it's simply not good enough to practice it. It has to be practiced in an environment similar to what will be experienced when the terms are being used. In other words, a realistic environment. And it's simply not good enough to practice in the context of the appropriate environment. It has to be practiced repetitively to turn the use of terms into a habit. A while back, I was told about a fire department who abandoned the use of the acronym LUNAR in their May Day operations. LUNAR stands for Location, Unit, Name, Assignment, and Resource Needs. The department had trained personnel on LUNAR in calm classroom conditions. Then they put the responders under stress in a training scenario and had them call a mayday and give a LUNAR report. The crews did not do well in remembering what the acronym meant and providing the right information. So this department scrapped the use of the LUNAR report. The department had failed to train their members to use LUNAR in conditions similar to what they would face in a real May Day. And then, of course, when they had to use it, they weren't good at it. I encouraged them to revisit their decision and consider training and practicing LUNAR in high-stress environments. They have since reported back to me that it worked, and their members are all good now. Develop a list of common terminology used in emergency situations. Then build communications into training scenarios using that common terminology. It's too easy to overlook this seemingly obvious advice. When we train, we're all together, face to face, often in low stress or no stress environments, with no time compression and no consequences. Communicating to each other is easy, or I should say easier, under these conditions. It's also unrealistic. It's been my observation that many public safety organizations overlook the importance of having commonly understood, easy to remember radio terminology. Further, they fail to build communications into their training scenarios, missing a valuable opportunity to build a skill set in a simulated, stressful environment. Second, teach members what not to say on a radio. Excessive radio traffic causes our brain to start filtering out the noise, and when this happens, you stop paying attention to the radio. Noise also impacts situational awareness because it can slow down the processors in the brain that help you to understand things. This is an easy test. Just try to read and concentrate on something while some obnoxious noise is present. The favorite music of my teenage sons might be a good stimuli to use here. Finally, consider conducting a communications audit. Get a few audio tapes of past incidents and listen to them and listen for opportunities to streamline and to use common terminology if you find that the audit reveals that there is some excessive radio traffic or confusing radio traffic. The things we have done in the past will tend to be repeated in the future. Use that as an opportunity to learn. If you've experienced or witnessed a near miss and would like to have a platform to share your lessons learned with others, please contact me by visiting the essaymatters.com website and clicking on the Contact Us link on the top of the homepage. Think about it for a moment. The lessons learned from your near miss event could save the life of another first responder. If you want to share those experiences here on the podcast, contact me. 
If you want to send me feedback, I'd love to hear from you. Just go to the Essay Matters website, click on the Contact Us tab, and send me a message. Okay, as I always do, I want to take a moment to thank the departments and the organizations that have hosted some great training for their members on situational awareness and high-risk decision-making. I do this to show my appreciation to those departments who put forth the effort to organize, advertise, and fund great training experiences. Recent tour stops included the Woodlands Fire Department in Texas, where I did a week-long company officer development institute program. The town of McCandless, Pennsylvania Fire Department, Fire Rescue International in Charlotte, North Carolina. Thank you to the International Association of Fire Chiefs for that opportunity. The NASA John Glenn Research Center in Cleveland, Ohio, and the Tennessee Safety and Health Conference in Nashville, Tennessee. And where I am now in Evansville, Indiana, doing a program in in conjunction with the Indiana Fire Chiefs Association. By the time this episode airs, I will have completed two programs hosted by the Redmond, Washington Fire Department and the Lexington County, South Carolina Fire Department. I'm also very thankful for the presentation opportunities that I have upcoming. If you're interested in joining me, here's where I'll be. August 26 and 27, Houston, Texas. September 5 through 7, the Norfolk Naval Shipyard. September 11 and 12, Chesapeake, Virginia. September 13 and 14, Richmond, Virginia. September 18 and 19, Topeka, Kansas. September 20, Sny Valley Fire Protection District. September 21, the University of California, Davis Campus. And September 26, the Pearland Fire Department. In October, the SA Matters tour goes international with programs in Sydney, Australia, Melbourne, Australia, Perth, Australia, Christchurch, New Zealand, Auckland, New Zealand, Amsterdam, Netherlands, and Antwerp, Belgium. That'll be 12 programs and 77 flight hours in 28 days. This may be by far the craziest SA Matters tour event ever. If you want to see the upcoming locations for all Situational Awareness Matters tour stops, head over to the SA Matters website and click on the blue box on the right side of the homepage labeled Upcoming Events Schedule. The schedule is always changing, so check back often. And if you're interested in hosting a Situational Awareness Matters event, uh, I have uh, two dates available in September and a couple of dates available in November and December. And I'm very actively booking the programs for 2018 now. So if you think your department or association or regional conference or state conference or your company, yes, we do programs for business and industry too, might be interested in hosting a program, just go to the SA Matters website and click on the Contact Us tab. The last time I was delivering programs in southwest Minnesota, I stopped and visited the sponsor of this podcast, Midwest Fire. Midwest Fire makes amazing all-poly-bodied apparatus, and it's changing the industry. You seriously need to check them out at MidwestFire.com. Anyhow, I got a chance to sit down and talk to a few of their employees about what separates Midwest Fire from their competitors. Let's listen into a conversation I had with engineer Tyler LeBrun about lean manufacturing and how Midwest Fire uses lean manufacturing in how it builds fire trucks. So Tyler, in a conversation we had earlier, you mentioned the, the term lean process or lean manufacturing. And, uh, and then when we were out on the shop floor, you were like snapping around these Japanese terms that, uh, you know, I guess in the lean manufacturing world mean something. What, what is all this, you know, voodoo magic of, of lean manufacturing or lean process? What does it mean? And why would a customer even care that you run a, a lean facility? Well, one of the big things with lean is it's very focused on the customer. Um, basically, you look at it as what the customer is willing to pay for. There's waste in our process. There's waste in everybody's process that they have if they own any type of business. And what waste is defined as is anything the customer is not willing to pay for. Um, we had a good example down there of, you know, maybe you've been in some different shops and seen stuff just scattered around everywhere, like maybe a floor jack, like somebody used it and left it right there. Well, now the next time somebody wants to go find that floor jack, if they've got to walk around for five or ten minutes, that's a waste that the customer's not willing to pay for. They, they don't want 
our guys to be down here wandering around looking for parts. They want them to be putting things onto their truck, and that stuff is value-added. The walking around and stuff that you're not willing to pay for is non-value-added. And that's that's really what drives down and you know brings us to be able to offer something better to the customer, that we are building a truck more efficiently, which obviously pays, passes savings on to them. Um, we talked about our inventory control system, Kanban, one of those fun Japanese words, um, that basically... Uh, allows allows for a system to be around our parts ordering that the operators control that that they go down they reach a minimum point they pull a card they do that kind of stuff but the parts are always there for them not only are the parts always there but there's not an excess amount of those parts which costs us money to carry which we would then obviously no doubt have to pass on to the customer but by reducing all these costs getting rid of all the waste we're really able to better give the customer a more quality truck you know faster and, and possibly at, at, a, at less cost than a competitor. So everybody here, I assume, um, has to go through some training to learn how to be part of a lean process manufacturing? Yep. So there's there's a couple of different ways that we've done that. There's been some guys that have been able to go out and do actual hands-on training at, um, you know, some seminars or that kind of stuff. Um, we've also gone out and taken tours of some real-world Cal-ass facilities in the area that we've been lucky enough to have. We also do some mentorship. That's something that I've been able to take my experience and kind of help the guys look at all that kind of stuff. But it really boils down to, you know, having... Having have a team that's willing to work together and continuously improve, and that continuous improvement is the big thing, is that we don't have a set goal in mind that we are going to be at X in 2016 and then we're never going to do anything again. Lean is really about continuous improvement and being just realizing that, that you're constantly in the pursuit of perfection. If you're not improving, you're on the decline. So that's, that's, that's really some of the... Some of the ideas behind that, with the continuous improvement and obviously training the employees. Well, there you have it, folks. Continuous self-improvement in lean manufacturing. It's what separates Midwest Fire from their competitors. Check them out at MidwestFire.com. Thank you, Midwest Fire President Sarah Atchison and all your staff for your awesome commitment to improving first responder safety. I sincerely appreciate your support of my mission. Hey, if you're not a member of the SA Matters community of learners yet, consider joining. There are over 9,000 9, members connected here on SA Matters, sharing ideas about how to improve situational awareness and how to make better decisions under stress and how to train members to be critical thinkers and resilient problem solvers. Membership is free, and when you sign up, I'll send you a special report that I've created for new members called 25 Best Practices for Improving First Responder Safety. Joining also gets you my monthly email newsletter that contains featured content from the blog and the podcasts. It really is the best way for us to stay in touch with each other. If you're not a member yet, head over to the SA Matters website, click on the red box on the right side of the homepage labeled Free Membership. If you want to get connected with me on Twitter, you can follow at Rich Gasway on Twitter. On LinkedIn, you can search for Rich Gasway on LinkedIn. On YouTube, you can watch my videos on the SA Matters TV SA Matters TV YouTube channel, and on Facebook, you can like the SA Matters page. Well, that's it. Episode 174 is complete. Thank you to our awesome podcast sponsor, Midwest Fire. Thank you to all of our live event hosts. Thank you to all of our online academy students. And thank you, our listeners, for sharing some of your valuable time with me today. I really appreciate your support of the SA Matters mission. Be safe out there. And may the peace of the Lord and strong situational awareness be with you always. You've been listening to the Situational Awareness Matters radio show with Dr. Richard B. Gassaway. If you are interested in learning more about situational awareness, human factors, and decision-making under stress, visit samatters.com. If you are interested in booking Dr. Gassaway for an upcoming event, visit his personal website at richgassaway.com.